Shall we welcome Cantor Nimi to the podium? Sure, thank you. And we'll say Kosarva, yeah, the cup, it's not just full, it's overflowing. There's, there's way too much and we're not gonna get to everything or, or even the edges of everything. It's, it's um, so Boker Tov, welcome. Th uh, thank you all for inviting me to uh, uh, share a little bit about uh, this particular topic. Um, the Psalms of Hallel, similar to the Psalms of Kabbalat Shabbat and other really um, uh, sections of Jewish liturgy that are um, that involve a lot of communal singing, because they involve a lot of communal singing, there are scores upon scores of musical settings for each of the Psalms and for various verses. And oh, we lost your sound, Cantonimi. It said that the host muted me. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Quite all right. Um, so lots of um, settings of psalms, but also settings of verses and of segments of psalms um, in these sections. Um, ordinarily, if I was going to do like a musical review of a particular psalm, I would include a lot of um, settings by non-Jewish said that the host muted me again. I don't know what's happening. Nope. Certainly none of us want you on mute. Okay, I don't know what's happening there, but we'll, we'll just keep well, an eye well, we're on we're making it. you a co-host, Cantor Nimi, if you aren't already, and that should help a lot. Well, I, I am a co-host, and I was oh, still being weird. muted and not touching anything, so okay. um, I'll just, we'll just keep our eyes on it. Um, yeah. In any case, um, uh, so ordinarily in doing a review of these kinds of psalms, I would, you know, or music of any psalm, I would go into a lot of non-Jewish composers because we know the, the psalms have been engaged by musicians of all different backgrounds. Um, but um, just because of the sheer quantity of Jewish composers who have set these psalms to music, that's where we're going to be putting our uh, our focus today. Um, the other thing that I'll mention is that we do have um, another um, person in the room with significant and deep expertise. Um, Hazan Naomi Hirsch, uh, a regular in our class, did her cantorial thesis on the Psalms of Hallel um, and her recital. And so we're actually going to get to hear a recording um, uh, that she made from one of the pieces that she did in her recital, admittedly yeah. several years removed that she did it at, at a concert later on. Um, so when we get to, I think it's in Psalm 115, um, we'll get to take a look at that. But for now, to bring us in um, and also the other final thing that I'll note is that um, for psalms where I'm going to be sharing things that include transliterated text, things especially that we're going to be singing um, communally, I unfortunately didn't have time to put together a lot of um, text sheets. So I'm going to be drawing heavily upon my PDF copy of the Reform Sidur, uh, Mishkan Tefillah, that has all of, that has not all, but a lot of the texts of Hallel compiled together with Hebrew transliteration and translation. Um, I would encourage you when you're listening to examples, if you want to consult a copy um, that you have of the Hebrew and English of a psalm, um, we may not be always able to, I may not be always able to bring up those texts on screen. That was just a coordination thing on my part. Um, and then finally, what I'll say is that um, I have a playlist that I'm happy to share with folks that we are not even gonna get to a fraction of today but it has about 125 YouTube recordings in a playlist of settings of hollow psalms. And I, my problem was narrowing things down. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to offer us the opening bracha, the opening blessing that one would recite at the beginning of hollow. And at the end, we'll, we'll do the concluding that way we are actually binding um, our study today um, in brachot. So and I'm, I'll bring it up on screen so that folks can see. This is uh, bu -bu 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 the blessing that one would recite at the beginning of Hollow. Where did it go? PDF. There we go. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher kidshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu likro et ha'halel. Amen. And so, um, and I'm going to share it now with sound. And oh, I keep forgetting 
final things. The other thing is please, if you have questions or comments, um, please feel free to put them in the chat. I have told, uh, as I always tell Harold, that he ha has license to, um, to interrupt me mercilessly. Not the recordings, but, but me, absolutely, he can interrupt mercilessly. Um, so let me uh, share my screen here, audio, find the right window. I have so many things open. Ah, here we go. All right, so um, another beautiful setting of that blessing that I just chanted, just so that you all can hear it, um, by, uh, sung by um, Hazan Alberto Misrahi. So a little bit of an expansion upon the blessing, um, a little bit more virtuosic and perhaps even improvisatory, uh, but very much within the same mode. And now for something completely different, just so you can hear that even within the blessing before uh, Hallel, there is a wide variety um, of approaches. Um, a group called Safam that uh, features especially the composition of, um, sorry, uh, of Cantor Rabbi Solomon. I'm really wary of um, top loading this session because um, Psalm 118 has probably more musical settings set to it than, than maybe even the rest of them combined. I, I could be mistaken in that, but that was my impression. And so I want to make sure that I don't top load uh, us too much here. Um, so just to say that there are even a variety of approaches to musical settings of the blessing, but before you even get to the Psalms of Hallel. Um, and at, for Psalm 113, I thought I would share a setting that would be very familiar to folks. As it happens, um, uh, they tried to get me a recording of, of the CBST chorus c who has performed this particular setting, but it was actually missing from the, the recording. So I'm gonna share um, one that's from the Boston uh, Zamir Chorale, a setting of Psalm 113 um, by Israeli composer Yechez Kolbran, who did a wrote a beautiful collection of choral settings of the Psalms. Um, and this is just one setting that it just so happens the CBST chorus has also performed. And we'll listen to a little bit of it.
I'm sorry we can't finish it, but I will be sharing these recordings with everyone after. I just want to make sure that we get to all of the material. I would encourage folks to go and listen more deeply into some of these settings. Um, so uh, let's see here. Ah, so I'm going to actually stop this share for the moment. And actually, this is a good point to um, if anyone has any questions or comments so far, but I will also be bringing up text for us. Seeing nothing. I just have one question for you. I believe I hear in the more towards the Orthodox that when they when they re recite the um, words of literature in a secular setting, they say Elokeinu and Elohim instead of Eloheinu and Elohim. Is that you correct? Hear, um, for the, the, the Tetragrammaton, you'll hear a lot of different approaches. You'll hear Hashem. Um, you heard in the blessing that Cantor Rabbi Solomon, who is a reform cantor, um, said Adoshem. Um, and you'll also hear in, um, especially in the Zamir Choral, in the, Nor the uh, Zamir Choral Foundation circles, North American Jewish Choral Festival, all of those folks, Hazamir, a lot of them say, um, instead of Adonai, they say Adomai, which is really interesting. I think it's because it involves similar sounds. It doesn't change the diction too much. And, then, and so you don't lose the integrity of the diction in the music because um, the M and N are really um, similar and related sounds. Um, so yeah, lots of different approaches, Elokeinu as opposed to Eloheinu, um, et cetera, absolutely. So um, so Cantor Nimi can work on like pulling out the, the different PDFs for the next thing. Um, the, the quick one sentence of context is that um, you shouldn't take God's name in vain. And how do we interpret that? We say specifically the four letter name of God, yod heh vav -Hey, the Tetragrammaton is the one you need to be extra, extra careful with, but perhaps all names of God, including in translation, like G-D might be subject to it. And you can even see on prayer shawls, a talit, uh, the blessing will sometimes purposefully have the wrong letters on it when it's printed on a prayer shawl um, so that it can be buried with uh without any worry yep and you, and it, it, it leads to some interesting um uh pronunciations and transliterations of things um like kale adon and hallelujah and all of these um uh very interesting kinds of um things that, that are not in my kind of um lexicon but for for those who are really concerned about um the the risk of taking god's name in vain is it, they take very seriously um, so you'll, you will hear some of those things in some of the recordings, depending on the performer's background. Um, and so, uh, just wanting to, um, ooh, and I, that's all right. All right. So Psalm 113, just to know that there are a lot of, con there actually are a fair amount of congregational settings of this text. Um, there's one that's actually in the um, the Shirenu, which is an anthology of uh, music put out by Transcontinental Music Publications, which is um, affiliated with the Reform Movement. Um, that can be done as a round, and it's got like three parts to it. One of them is, it's by Julius Grossman. Um, I don't know when it was written, but presumably before, the, before Shirenu itself was published, so somebody who, who is better on the publication dates can check in on that. But it's like, um, it sounds a little bit like this. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, you do have day, Adonai, hallelujah, hallelujah, you do have day, Adonai, hallelujah, hallelujah, you do Adonai, hallelujah. And it's kind of like, um, it, it, it has different parts that could be rounded and looped together. I will share a recording with you all. I intended to uh, really prepare um, to sing that one for you all, but there's also another um, wonderful congregational setting um, that's sung at um, Town and Village Synagogue in New York. Um, in fact, that's the only attribution that's on it, as heard at Town and Village Synagogue. Um, that sounds like, um, let's give a little key here. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Abde Adonai, Hallelujah, Et Shem Adonai, Yehi Shem Adonai, Mevorach, Meyata Ave Adolam, 
می می میزراق شم شاد می و مخولان شمارونای را ما کل گویی ما دونای آل هشامایم که ودون. They just use that melody to cycle through the text. Um, that kind of more um, might we say like a psalmodic approach where you have a patterned melody that repeats over and over again is a probably more typical approach that I've seen with settings of Psalm 113 in particular. Um, uh, so to hear uh, a, a good example of that uh, in a Sephardi or Mizrahi context, we're going to come back to our recordings here. Um, there's a beautiful collection of recordings um, of Hazanim and Paitanim through the National Library of Israel's archives. Um, and one, um, I believe that he's Iraqi, but I, could, I would have to double check, but uh, Hazan Moshe Chavusha um, has made recordings of all the Psalms and of many Piyutim and Pismonim, uh, these uh, congregational, um, and frankly also even um, specifically cantorial um, settings of texts. Uh, so here is his setting of Psalm 130, his rendition. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. رام على كل قيم أدوناي على الشمائم كبدو مك أدوناي إلوينو هم مغفيه لا شابت هم مشبيلي لرؤت بالشمائم وبأري. You all get the idea. Um, again, taking that kind of that um, by, uh, bifurcated melody, um, applying it to the first and second half of each verse. Um, and repeating throughout all of the verses in the psalm is a very classic um, approach to recitation um, re across cultures, actually. just depends on what the uh, particular melody might be. Um, the one exception to there being a lot of um, musical settings that are more um, uh, tuneful or, or, or contemporary kind of sounding or even uh, based in like um, uh, folk music uh, whether American folk music or Eastern European or, or otherwise, um, is uh, starting at Mekimi, uh, Meafar Dal, which um, somebody can tell me what verse that actually starts at off the top of my head, I don't recall. Um, and so there are some beautiful settings that set those verses specifically. Um, one by a Breslov Chassid, Yosef Karduner. Or Joey Weisenberg. Or a cantorial interpretation by Chazan Yosef Rosenblatt.
So, and again, the, the well is deep. We could we could dive forever into just that one psalm. Um, but moving on to, uh, I'm going to pause for a moment before moving on to Psalm 114, just to see if there are any questions or comments so far. Lots of comments, uh, no direct questions. So okay, we could... great. Um, so moving okay. forward with Psalm 114, um, I thought you all might enjoy to hear this um, this uh, beautiful like archival recording of a melody that we know very, very well. Um, I think this is from some film. I don't recall what film exactly it's from. I'd have to do a little bit of homework. It's in the in the description here. Um, by this melody by Yedidia Admon. I feel like I know who that is, but I'm not recalling. If anyone who has a really good knowledge of, of um, the like Shire Eretz Yisrael era singers, it's not Shuli Natan, but she looks so familiar to me. So if anyone re by any chance recognizes her. We have a suggestion her, that it's Cher. Uh, <laughs> uh, likely not, but but I do see the resemblance. Um, <laughs> um, and so... Uh, I, for just kind of moving through a lot of traditions uh, with the recitation of this psalm, um, there was a great uh, recording that was made um, by the Zamir Chorale of Boston, um, where they did an exploration of reciting the psalm in Hebrew, but in a Gregorian chant style. Um, and so I wanted to share with you all a little, and then juxtaposing that with Latin. So I thought you all might enjoy hearing that. That's all we have time for with that. Uh, but you hear that's a beautiful juxtaposition of the two traditions. Those of you who uh, were in the class that I led talking about the um, the kind of uh, recitation of Psalms and what we know about it, the, the historicity of um, various practices and recitation of Psalms, know that there is a definitely a lot of scholarship and theories out there that draw connections between um, Hebrew psalmody and Gregorian chant. Um, and that that um, they may have coexisted, or that or, or that Gregorian chant may have come out of Hebrew psalmodic practices. Um, that is a, a can of worms conversation that we could certainly get into, but um, not the topic for today. Um, but just to hear that uh, recitation, I think, is really beautiful. Um, this Cantor, is I would, Cantor, I'm just going to say that Lori Spear, our archivist, is coming up with the recording of that earlier class because a lot of people are in class now did not get to hear you teach on psalmody. And we will be sharing that again on the Facebook page so people can go back and hear that. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, because I don't have time to get into the, the weeds and that, unfortunately, today. But I would encourage you all to, uh, if you yeah, if you have access to that, to go back um, and listen. And I'm, I'm, of course, happy to chat about that another time as well. Um, here's a beautiful melody uh, from the uh, Livorno Sephardi, the Italian Sephardi uh, tradition offered by, again, Chazan Alberto Mizrahi. Israel, be me, 
Bet Yaakov, me am loez, bet se Yisrael. Again, I'll be sharing all these recordings with you all after, and I'm going to actually skip down here for the moment um, to uh, this beautiful setting, which I believe might be uh, Benzion Shanker, actually, uh, but arranged for Cantor Choir and Orchestra. <laughs> Much more. It's a beautiful setting and great orchestration that was uh, put together for that. Um, all right, I'm going to stop this share for a moment, bring up text so that we can sing something together. Um, so we know that 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 Yedidya Admon Meli the Bitzet Yisrael Mi Mitzrayim is really well known. There is another tune that I personally feel should be much more widely known that Debbie Friedman wrote. So I'm going to bring up text for us and share a little bit of that with you. Um, so hold on here. Let's go to, there we go. So this is, De, uh, Debbie Friedman actually wrote two settings of this uh, text, but my favorite is the one that goes like this. setting short sweet lots of energy to it um uh gonna continue here uh with some a couple more recordings i'm trying to really zoom through here i don't know if uh, no pun intended um i don't know if you all realize but i'm uh, oh um, and i see that we have a um a raised hand from hazan hirsch please while i'm pulling up my next thing um if you would so hi i just wanted to add that um part of the reason someone asked about settings before i'm not getting into why we use that word but one of the things that's so important when the halal psalms in, in any setting of music but is the word painting so in that psalm in psalm 114 we have these really um descriptive words oh see why run away jordan why flow backward i mean think of the jordan river flowing backward Mountains, why dance like lambs? Hills, why dance like lambs? So in some of the settings, you can really hear those hills skipping, uh, dancing, or, you know, skipping. So for instance, the um, there's a Safam setting. We heard the Safam uh, leader for the uh, 
first blessing and um he sets the the psalm 114 oh yes it's back in this uh, recording up here as well oh, you got the recording okay great so i'll let him do it but um you know you hear do you really hear the the prancing and dancing so it's something to look out for beautiful yeah and and um i i have i unfortunately we have to get to to uh, three more psalms otherwise i would go back and, and place on that but i will be sharing the recording with folks afterward and i would highly recommend any of the safam record uh safam recordings of the psalms they're all wonderful um uh Cantor uh, Robbie Solomon is a, is a great songwriter and composer. Um, I wanted to share with you all one more kind of cantorial approach to this text um, by uh, uh, Cantor Leib Glantz. Just a little taste. So this is striking to me for, for one particular reason. It's actually um, a, a quote that, that Hazan uh, Hirsch shared with me from Leib Glantz, where he said, when we enter into an Orthodox synagogue, the ear is immediately struck by sad, almost tearful tones. And one gets the impression that Jewish liturgy is based on sad plaintive keys and modes, even when the verbal content expresses joy and thanksgiving. It strikes me that then when he goes to recite this psalm that is so joyous and upbeat that he takes this very plaintive drawn out minor kind of tone um i i just find that very uh particularly striking um so just again shows that there are so many different approaches to these texts um i wanted to move on to psalm um one uh 15 yes 115 because lordy we're we're um we have only have 10 minutes. Um, so, and just to share with you that um, we have a, this great setting um, of the beginning of Psalm 115, actually by Felix Mendelssohn, um, who somebody can correct my history on this, um, converted to Christianity. I think he was born Jew Jewish and walked away from it. I'm not sure that he formed, whether or not he formally converted. He did not live life as a Jew. Right. But he happened to write this it. setting of the beginning of Psalm 115 in Hebrew. And this is um, Cantor Lori Corson from Temple Emmanuel performing oh. it. can get an idea of what the piece is like and again I, I would encourage you all to listen to the recording it is gorgeous um and so um also from psalm 115 i am so pleased to be able to share with you all of this um and i'm going to stop my share here for a moment because i don't even know what you all are seeing uh, <laughs> um uh, to um to share with you all um a psalm setting uh, from Psalm 115, um, at pe the verse that starts with the phrase pe lahem, um, which if somebody could tell me what verse that is, because I'm not recalling off the top of my head, I know that it's later on in the psalm. It is in Psalm 115, verse 5. Thank you, verse 5. Um, so there is a beautiful setting, uh, Chazanut, 
uh, can cantorial, you know, artistic cantorial setting of this text set by um, Cantor Israel Alter, who was on the faculty at one time at uh, HUCJIR, um, and arranged by somebody who is still on the faculty actually at HUCJIR, um, Cantor um, uh, Israel Goldstein. Um, and it was so funny when I was trying to find, I was like looking at the sheet music for the that I have for it and thinking there's no way that I can prepare this for you all by Thursday. Um, and so I was looking for recordings and I happened to come across a very familiar name on a, um, a recording from a concert done in Germany um, by our very own Hazan Naomi Hirsch. Um, and so I thought I would share with you all a little bit of that. So first here is the album cover. And I don't know, Hazan Hirsch, if you want to tell us a little bit about how that concert kind of came about. Okay, thanks. I don't want to take too much time, but um, I received a surprise phone call one day. Someone had heard me sing um, a year and a half earlier and had decided that they should bring me to Germany to participate in this concert. And it was such an honor. It was part of a, um, a museum exhibition called Patterns of Jewish Life. In, sponsored by what was about to become the Jewish Museum of Berlin, but it didn't exist yet. It was a three-month exhibition, and the exhibition didn't have any media. So to accompany it, they had an extensive program of Jewish film, concerts, and lectures. And one of the concerts was Ashkenazic cantorial music. And so it was me and two Orthodox cantors from Switzerland who uh, agreed to perform with me. And then when they made a C double CD set, the Virgo label of Harmony of Wundi made a double CD set of the, all the concerts. And I was really honored that two of my selections were chosen. And it was, so if we could uh, see... it was 29 years ago. And um, I already asked permission. I just want to say, I already asked permission to share a picture of Hazan Hirsch from uh, from this time, so hold on a moment. The concert itself. From the concert itself for folks who would, are curious. And so let's listen to a little bit of her uh, rendition of um, Israel Alter's Pelahem. Share.
Thank you, Hazan Hirsch. Um, so I'm going to bring up text here just so I, we can conclude, wrap up this song by singing together, and then we'll uh, continue on here in our last few moments. Um, so uh, we have a um, familiar closing here. Uh, where, where is it? Uh, hold on. There we go. Uh, uh, this setting by Debbie Friedman that um, that Rabbi Rapport referenced earlier in the week, just to kind of wrap up this psalm. Also, by the way, a beautiful setting of that text by uh, Noah Aronson, which is in the playlist, and you can um, continue to listen. I see that we are at 945. We didn't even get to Psalm 116, let alone 117 or 118. Do we have time to at least skip to 118 and do a couple of things from 118? Wonderful. Um, so uh, I knew this was going to happen, that I was going to front load everything and that we were going to be uh, rushing when we got to 118, but that is fine. Um, so. Going through our text, as somebody mentioned uh, yesterday, I believe it was, this text is kind of often put into sections, and some of those sections are actually determined by the way that they are recited with melody. So, for example, the first four lines, Hodu Ladonai Kitov, um, are often self contained in the way that they are recited. Um, a very common custom in uh, Ashkenazi communities is to set that text to a tune of the season. So, if you're around, um, you know, uh, Hanukkah, you might do and set it to Maos Tsur. Um, or um, when we enter the month of Adar, I often do it to a tune of a Hasidic melody uh, for Misha Nichnas Adar, the one who enters Adar increases joy. Etc. You can go on and on. When you get to Micha Mocha, you might do it to the tune of Adir Hu. Um, Etc. Um, Debbie Friedman has a lovely setting of this text as well. Um, there's a beautiful um, setting, uh, Chazanut, Pseudo Chazanut Congregational by uh, Cantor Israel Alter. Um, but I will share a lot of those in the, uh, in the playlist. Uh, when we get to the next kind of section of text, Min HaMetzar, folks here might know the melody that's really ubiquitous. Min HaMetzar Karatiya Anani Vamerchavya. Those of you might also uh, remember that Cantor Zeidenberg um, brought a melody that I think was from India, if I'm not mistaken, that combined Min HaMetzar with Hodu Ladonai Kitov, that went a little bit like... Um, and kind of looped those two texts together. Um, I've shared a melody in, with this class by Deborah Sachs Mintz um, that I love personally. It goes, Min HaMetzar Karatiya Aya Nani Vamer Chavya Min HaMetzar Karatiya Anani Vamer Chavya one of my all-time favorite approaches to the text, though, comes from um, a couple of North African communities, specifically, I think, Tunisia and Libya. Um, and so I'm going to bring up text here for a moment so that you all can hear that. Um, 
and see the text and just see how bright it is that from the narrow place we call to God and God answers from the wide expanse. So this is a North African melody. Min hamet sarkaratiya Hanani va mer khavya Adunani lo ira Maya seri adam Adunai ni be ozrai Vaani ere vison ai Tov la chasot ba donai Mi be toach ba 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 adam Tov la chasot ba donai Mi be toach bin divim Kol goim se vavuni Beshem adonai ki hamilam and it continues on through the text. A wonderful, just like sunshiny, upbeat melody for uh, for that particular uh, text. Sneak All right. This Friday night, we are going to be singing Min HaMetzar in anticipation of uh, Pesach. Um, cantorial student Zevi Berman is going to be singing it to Noah Aronson's new composition. It also is. So oh, great. yes. And that is on the playlist, too, I think. Um, on, he titles it Anani. Um, but it is on the playlist, so you can check it out there as well. But um, I'm a big fan of Zevi, so uh, they were my roommate for a year. Um, so uh, going on with Psalm 118, uh, Pitchuli is kind of the next um, hi highlight. Mode. There is also Oziva Zimratia. I don't want to short shrift Oziva Zimratia. You all might know Shefa Gold setting um, Oziva Zimratia. There's also a beautiful setting by Hillel Tege, who's the music director at the Jewish community Ikar on the West Coast. Um, that goes, Ozi vezimratia, vayahini nishua, Ozi vezimratia, vayahini nishua. Lots of fun getting big in the camps right now. Um, for Piet Huli, folks might know the Karlobach most uh, well in this community. Piet Huli, Sharei Tzedek. Um, uh, Shefa Gold also has a great upbeat tune. Um, Pit Huli Share Tzedek Pit Huli Share Tzedek Avovam Odeya Avovam Odeya Avovam Od and it's just this um surge of energy open the gates of justice for me and the righteous will enter uh praising God giving thanks to God um, there are so many beautiful melodies. Safam, uh, that we mentioned earlier, this band that especially features cantor Ravi Solomon, has a wonderful setting of uh, the Pitchuli text. Um, uh, there are great Hasidic tunes. Um, uh, the Mojitz Hasidic community in particular has a really lovely melody, I think, by... Uh, I'm always forgetting the first name, but the last name is Taub. Um, there are great contemporary settings by Israeli composers like uh, Felisa and Or Zohar. Um, Deborah Sachs Mintz, who wrote that setting of Minha Meitzar that I mentioned before, also has a lovely setting of Pit Um I've done it in interfaith settings. I've set it to various hymn tunes. It's another one of those texts that sometimes gets done um, where it's set to other melodies as well. Um, and on and on. Moving on to the next section, the final... I would say you could argue for the final section, but there's a couple of little bits. We have Odecha is oftentimes done as a self-contained set of texts. You may have heard um, a, a, an unknown melody. Odecha ki anitani vatehi li li shua negoze hayom asa Adonai nagila venismechavo. It could be that we know the composer for that. I just don't happen to have that information with me. You may also know from the Pride Celebrations, a beautiful and, and very upbeat choral setting by Stephen Glass. Really briefly, I know that, oh gosh, we're at 953. Cantor, you know, we're, we're going to be here for years. And Hallel, although featured at Pesach, also comes back. And so I'm seeing what I'm seeing in chat is the the settings of Hallel uh, class two, um, which we can negotiate with you. Okay, I'll call your agent about that. I think we have to come to a wrap up of this if it's okay with you. Sure, absolutely. And just a tiny bit of housekeeping. Uh, this 